Hello, welcome to the Yarra Valley. Uh, I promise you this is not a green screen or a painting. It's this beautiful here today. Uh, we're so thrilled to be coming to you live from Oz. I'm Jo and this is Matt and Hello. we're at Oak Ridge Winery where usually on a Saturday at one o'clock we would be in lunch service, but we're not. Yeah, it's been an uh, interesting start to the year with um, you know a few few things happening here in Australia, the drought and the bushfires and now the uh, COVID crisis, but um, you know, Australians are really resilient people, we can adapt to, to the situation and um, as a result, we're not cooking lunch today, we're bringing recipes to you live here with Australia, so what are we making, Joe? So part of the Yarra Valley that we love the most, um, especially here at Oak Ridge, we focus on local uh, produce and local producers, obviously wine being one of the best wine regions in Australia and the world. So uh, we've got cherries across the road, we've got Brussels sprouts down the road, um, lots of berries and fruit. But one of my favourite ingredients and um, something that is dear to our hearts is milk. So we work with a local dairy uh, called Little Yarra Dairy and Tyrone Brown has 14 Jersey cows and it's all completely biodynamic. And we're really lucky that we get some of his milk each week. Um, so today we're going to be making a Neufchatel cheese, um, which comes from France originally, um, but we're doing our kind of take on it. Uh, if you're cooking along at home, grab your pot, and in here we've got four litres of milk, so pop the milk in. Uh, this type of cheese is a soft cow's curd, so we add cream to the cheese, um, to the milk, just to enrich a bit of the fat content and get a really nice creamy uh, cheese happening. So I've got the milk in here and I'm just adding 300 mils of cream. And so like um, a lot of, you know, really predominant wine regions around the world, um, you think of France and Italy and countries like that, they also have a really big cheese culture. And I think the Yarra Valley really, um, really has a great sort of cheese thing going on. The Yarra Valley Dairy, which is about seven or eight kilometers from the restaurant here, you can make some fantastic world-class cheeses. Uh, there's a few other small dairy um, dairies around that make some nice local cheeses. And luckily, uh, over the, what, the last two years, Joe, you've been making cheeses? Yeah, about two years. Um... Joe makes uh, all of the cheeses here at the restaurant. She does a fantastic job, everything from fresh burrata and mozzarella to curds, uh, different set curds, um, fantastic brie, and then some kind of aged alpine cheeses that take up to kind of six months to age and make. But it's been a, a process, but the whole process has been inspired by wanting to showcase this amazing product you know when you have milk that's from jersey cows that are on the you know beautiful green pastures the flavor is absolutely phenomenal and just wanting to work with tyrone and sort of highlight his product as best we can that kind of motivated the cheese making process and now joe's really mastered it and lucky enough i get to eat a lot of it so <laughs> so the um thing about this cheese so we want um unhomogenized milk which is milk that hasn't gone through that process of breaking down the fat uh, globules throughout the milk so the fat will still sit on top. Uh, if you can't get a hold of unhomogenized milk, don't worry, just any old milk will do. So we're heating this up in a pot. It's really important with cheese making that everything's sterilized. So that's just the process of dipping your equipment into boiling water and killing any of the bad bacteria. But we're all pros at being nice and clean now, washing our hands, so uh, I know that you'll all nail it. So what we're doing here, I've got a digital thermometer and I'm just stirring gently to stop the milk from sticking to the bottom of the pot. And we're just bringing this up to 27 degrees. So this milk has already been pasteurized just due to the laws in Australia. If you're overseas, um, you probably want to heat your milk up to 80 degrees just to kill any of the bad bacteria that may be hanging around. So once we've done that, we're going to add our culture. So this is Floridanica, which is a freeze dried culture. What these do, for um, the cheese making process is because this milk is gonna sit and ferment, the bacteria stops, um, kind of takes over and stops our milk from going sour. And if you don't have freeze dried cultures, you can use kefir, which you can get from the supermarket. Uh, and we're just gonna add it in. So we're just adding a small amount. I'm just gonna use my temperature probe and we're popping in just about two or three of these little freeze dried granules. Then we're gonna go just added your cultures to the milk and we've let them ripen. I'm sure you've all caught up at home now if you're cooking along. Sorry for the technical difficulties. It's uh, 
back online now, so we should be good. So we've just been stirring the cultures in and the milk's at 27 degrees. And now we're going to add our rennet. Again, if you're using kefir, pop that in now. Uh, rennet is an enzyme that will set and coagulate uh, the protein. So this is just like uh, setting a panna cotta, which is pretty cool. And um, with this cheese, it does take about two or three days to make, but the actual contact time is really low. You probably only spend max over the three days, about half an hour. So it's really a convenient thing to make. And if you're making it with kids as well, that's um, it's nice because you don't need a big attention span. So I've got a little doser here and I filled it up to about 1.3 mils, which is pretty small. And with rennet, when you're adding it to the milk, because our milk is warm, it will start activating pretty quickly. So with an up and down motion of our spoon, we're just going to drop the rennet into the, the milk. And then because this is a really slow um, set time, it's a lactic cheese, so the cultures and the rennet help set the cheese. Um, we're going to let it set overnight. So make sure you pop your pot in a position where it's not going to be uh, moved because if we break our kind of set milk, the whey is going to come out and it'll ruin our cheese, which is a bit of a bummer. So I'm going to pop this to the side and we'll let it set overnight. And this is my favorite part about cooking. Ta-da! Here, here's one <laughs> we did last night. Uh, so it's got a really nice wobble to it. And what has happened is the milk has set from top to bottom solidly. I should say, make sure everyone, when they make cheese, is they leave the spoon inside the milk. Um, once it's set, it's going to set in there. So you do want to take the spoon out and make sure you cover it. You and then it I've done that so many times. <laughs> Here I just have a, a perforated tray with a tray underneath to catch it. You could use a strainer at home and a bowl because um, I'm sure this won't fit in my fridge at home. But just to show you the process, um, it's easy, it spreads out. And then this is just some cheesecloth. Um, you could use or some muslin cloth. And then we're just going to ladle the curd, which is set all the way through. So it's set just like a panna cotta, a bit of a... This is the most satisfying part, or one of the most satisfying parts of making cheese is when you get to scoop the curds um, and you kind of see the alchemy of milk turning into something else. This cheese is really nice as well, uh, just because it does have that slow set time. You pick up on all these flavors of um, like grass and the flowers that the cows are eating, which is pretty special. So it really represents where it's come from. Yeah, definitely. So I'll keep scooping, and then we do have one. Ta -da. So what cheese are you making for newcomers? Uh, Neuf Chateau. Sorry, this is Katie. So if you've got any questions, Katie's um, our woman behind the screen. Uh, shoot them away and she can ask us, because if we miss out on anything, um, yeah, pick up some questions. So once we've pooped everything, this just goes into the fridge and we'll sit and drain overnight and that's just the, like the nursery rhyme the curds and the way that we've set overnight and you can see i haven't scooped at all but the volume has dropped and then underneath we're left with this way and there's so many uses we, um, here in the restaurant we use it to make sauces uh to help ferment yeah it makes a great soda as well so you can make a naturally carbonated drink that's low in sugar at home. So by mixing around a pound of whey this roughly to a litre of water, a spoon of honey and some fruit, whatever fruit you like. Uh, if you've got some, you know, some sad looking lemons that you've zested and haven't used the inside, just cut the flesh out, you know, a pint of strawberries or blueberries up the back of the fridge, anything that's old or not looking great or beautiful fresh fruit as well. Uh, you can add that in, put it into a bottle, seal it up, leave it for about four or five days depending on the um, temperature and you'll get a beautiful naturally carbonated um, soda from that as well. So, you know, it's probably using it in, um, just, just a sort of space.
So we've got both. Back again, sorry about that. <laughs> we've got both cheeses here. So this is the first day um, after it's drained a little bit. And then this is our final cheese before we've added any salt or, um, so it's just the curd pretty much. And so now this is when we do add salt. And we add salt for a few reasons. I mean, flavor as well. It will definitely enhance uh, our milk flavor, but also salt acts as a preserver. So this cheese, once we do make it, will last for two weeks. What's the difference between Neufchatel and cream cheese? Um, well, this uh, cheese comes from Normandy in France. So it's a French style cheese. Cream cheese is a little bit denser and thicker. I don't think it has as much salt added. And Neufchatel has a kind of fluffy, creamy texture and it's more of a cow's curd. Um, and we're going to be coating this one in some spices and stuff from the garden, whereas a cream cheese, um, you wouldn't be coating. But you could use it in a, in a cheesecake in similar ways as well, because it's got that beautiful, fluffy, light flavour. We are talking this morning, it'd be great in a cheesecake or in a tiramisu or something like that. So you could use this um, beautiful cheese in place of uh, mascarpone or cream cheese or something like that. Short sure, pasta. Yeah, it would make a really beautiful pasta filling as well. That might be a bit of a, a cultural uh, clash between France and Italy there, but I think <laughs> it would be, um, it'd be really nice inside of a ravioli or a tortellini. So just to recap what we've done, we've heated our milk to 27 to 28 degrees. We've added our cultures, we've popped in our rennet, and we've left our milk to set overnight. Then the next morning we've come back and we've hooped our curds into our strainer um, and then we've let it drain again for another night, which is what we've got here. And then one more night later, we're ready to add our salt. So this recipe will be available, right? Is yep, that, that yeah, definitely, for sure. So, so if you're so, missing any steps, don't worry, it'll be all available online. So you can uh, print it out, have a good read and follow along. So with, um, I guess this is a little bit different to some other cheeses where you would have a percentage of salt to add. This one, we're just doing it by flavour because it is a soft cheese. It uh, doesn't have a long shelf life like um, Breeze or um, you know Tom style cheeses. So we're just doing this one for flavour. So once we add the salt, you'll see the yeah, you'll see the texture kind of starts to um, become a little bit more homogenised and even instead of having a drier outside and kind of a, the wetter centre. A bit more salt. And then this is the uh, fun part. So Matt went up to the garden and picked some uh, stuff from the garden. So behind the restaurant, we've got beautiful gardens where we kind of take a lot of inspiration for our menus and um, what we actually use. So we've picked some herbs and some flowers and we've dried them and some radishes. So yeah, we just picked these radishes this morning. Um, so they're beautiful, crunchy and nice and peppery. So that's kind of a really nice sort of um, sort of dip into the um, into the cheese afterwards. Uh, you could have any sort of crudités, you know, some chopped up carrots, uh, some fennel, whatever you like, but you know, they're straight from the garden, so they're nice. But we've also picked uh, this beautiful mix of different herbs and flowers from our garden, um, and we've just kind of dried them a little bit. So there's some salt bush, which is an Australian native herb that we've grown uh, in the garden. There's some lovage, there's some lemon thyme, rosemary, uh, parsley, and then we've got some garlic flowers, some calendula flowers, and some nasturtium. So basically it's just really replicating where we are uh, and the environment. So the milk's got all of those beautiful flavours of, of where it came from, and this is sort of uh, flavours of where we are now. And this is all ingredients that we'd use uh, throughout the menu here at the restaurant, um, but it's, it's just a great way. It looks really pretty, but you're going to get all these different flavour hits when you eat the cheese. You get some of the lobbage, which is kind of celery and parsley flavoured. You get a little hit of the garlic flour, the peppery nasturtium. So it's just a really nice flavourful mix. I have a question. If I want to try making cheese, where do I get rennet and cultures from? Oh, that's a great question. So rennet, um, for this one we've used a calf rennet, but you can also use a vegetable rennet if you're a vegetarian. And uh, I get my rennet online, but you can also get it from health food stores. Uh, kefir you can get at the supermarket now or a health food shop or if you're going to go down the uh, cultures uh, road which starting out is a nice way to go uh, just because of the flavor profile I can understand that when you make cheese for the first time you get a bit worried about is it safe to eat and um, like I definitely felt like that but the freeze-dried cultures have a very really subtle flavor and I just get them um, online so from cheese links in Australia and they send really quickly 
but uh, definitely just chuck it into Google. Uh, this one is a Floridanica culture, which is great for anything like this with a long fermentation. So what we've done is um, we take the cheese and then shape it into a cylinder shape like this. And if you've had goat's cheese that maybe um, is coated in ash or um, I don't know, what else do you coat? Pepper, uh, things Pepper, like that. Pepper. It's got a, kind of a yeah. very similar uh, consistency to that. So we've just shaped them and then we're going to coat them in our coating. So this one here, I've got some roasted flaked almonds and some dried apricots and a bit of wattle seed. And then you just roll them in, if you like that fruit cheese combo, some people don't. I do, I think it's nice. And then Matt's got his um, dried herbs and flowers from the garden. So you just want to give it a bit of a press in uh, so everything sticks really nicely, but you can see how beautiful and sort of vibrant that looks already. So make sure you get it on all of the ends. Just kind of roll it in your hands just to press it into the cheese. And there's no fixed size or amount um, for the shape of these. It kind of depends how much coating to curd ratio that you want. And I mean, you get total free reign. They're also really nice gifts. So the four liters of milk, I mean, we've made five cheeses here. That looks so beautiful. Mm. Like that. And then we've got one other flavor that we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to do a, an Australian spiced uh, rub as well. So we've got some mountain pepper and mountain pepper. Um, this is the leaf of the pepper plant. It grows in the mountains that surround the Yarra Valley here. So we. And our team of chefs, we've, uh, we gather that pretty regularly. Uh, we've got some dried salt bush that we've ground down to a powder, so the same as that was in the, the first mixture there. We have some anise myrtle, so that's, um, as the name would suggest, an anise-flavoured uh, native herb here as well. We have some lemon myrtle, one of the more commonly known Australian native uh, spices. And we have some cinnamon myrtle, so all just kind of really nice fragrant flavours there. And we're just going to make a bit of a mix on the tray. Just coat that. You can put nuts and um, seeds as well, it's kind of free reign. If you did want it a little bit softer, like this one, you just don't hang it as long. But if you did want something that's a little bit firmer, you just hang the cheese, uh, let more whey drain out. It's yummy, you can smell that from here. So this is really nice and fragrant. There's a little bit of uh, heat from the pepper, but you get a beautiful citrus flavour from the, from the lemon myrtle, and then you get those kind of really herbaceous notes from the cinnamon myrtle and the anise myrtle. But this could be absolutely any spice mix. Um, it's actually quite nice if you do, you know, sort of a chili um, little rub on here as well. I like a bit of spice, so you could do some some chili flakes added to this would be quite lovely. And just keep in mind, it's better if you have things that are dried. Um, if you're going to coat them in uh, something fresh, you probably want to eat it a bit sooner, just because they break down a little bit. Whereas the dried uh, herbs and spices do take up some of the moisture from the cheese, and they kind of stay a little bit prettier for longer. Then to serve. Um, I guess they're delicious just like this, but we do have some La Boche and some bread. I mean, we're in Australia. This would be amazing with Avo on toast, which is very Melbourne and delicious for a reason. Melbourne signature dish, right? <laughs> um, and so with um, cheese, wine obviously is a very hand-in-hand uh, -hand sort of thing. Um, there's a lot of kind of, I think personally, misconception about, uh, about cheese and wine. I think people gravitates a red wine with cheese too often. Uh, for a fresh cheese like this, it's got the lactic sort of flavor. It's got a nice acidity to it. So for me, um, a white wine with this, so a Chardonnay is absolutely perfect. And you want a, a beautiful sort of Chardonnay that's got a lovely clean acid line to it. Uh, it's got those lovely stone fruit sort of flavors going on. Sort of very classic uh, Yarra Valley style Chardonnay. We've got our uh, 86400 diamond here. So this is uh, one of our premium Offerings, it's very delicious, and I think it's the perfect accompaniment for white malt cheeses. So, we'll get into that. It's made by the amazing David Bicknell, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question for Joe. Uh, once finished, can you freeze these without the texture on them? Uh, I actually have never tried freezing this cheese. Uh, I think it would probably hold quite a bit of moisture. Um, if you did want to extend the shelf life a little bit, maybe adding a little bit more salt to the outside of the cheese, you do get a different texture. You could even salt it um, and then it turns into a grating cheese. But I would probably recommend um, yeah, eating it fresh. It might just hold a little bit too much moisture. Uh, you could make a half batch, but I mean, you could give it to your neighbor and to your friends as well. 
Um, and I'm sure once you try it, you'll probably end up eating it all. <laughs> yeah, well, because it does last for two weeks, it's got a pretty good shelf life and it's got so many uses as well. But it's um, it's one of those things that it is a lovely gift. I think, you know, when Jo makes this at home, she'll give it to our to our neighbours, Gabby and Tim, um, and then they, like, bring us a makasha. So it's kind of like, you know, food... Food helps community a lot as well. And I think, you know, it's a really great quality here in Australia is that food brings people together. Um, we share food as, as chefs, you know, we share ideas. We talk with chefs all across Australia, particularly at the moment we've been speaking with everyone and sharing recipes and sharing ideas. And that's, um, it's one of the really beautiful things about the sort of culinary scene here in Australia for sure. Yeah, um, we can't wait for everybody to get back out there and start traveling around. I mean, the Yarra Valley has so much to offer. We feel very grateful that we get to spend our days here cooking with our garden. And I mean, there's so many wineries out here, beautiful restaurants. We've got gin tasting and chocolate and cheese and you can go hiking. Um, we are, yeah. it's, it's amazing, you know, we're 50 minutes out of the CBD of Melbourne. Like Joe and I live in the heart of Melbourne. Uh, and we travel out here every day. It's really not that far away. And that's one of the great things about not just Melbourne, but all of the cities in Australia. Within you know an hour sort of drive around, you can find yourself in such beautiful country, um, you know, eat, uh, drinking world-class wine and eating world-class food. And it's just, um, it's, it's a pretty magical thing. And we just can't wait till, you know, we, we're share, making a lot of online content at the moment so everyone can eat, um, you know, versions of our food. But we just can't really wait to open up and, and feed everyone again and you know just we really genuinely love cooking um i'm kind of sick of cooking at home there's a lot of dishes I've, I've been cooking a lot at home with so many dishes i just don't stop um so you know there's a big team of people here to help us do all of that and it's just um yeah hopefully it's not too far away till we can open the doors and welcome everyone back and i know that as soon as i can i can't wait to start traveling around yeah, well, Joe and I are already planning. I'm going to head to Western Australia as soon as I can to see my family. We're going to go up to Byron Bay. We're going to go to Uluru as soon as when we can take a holiday. Um, yeah, just get around Australia. I think there's just so much to see and do. And it's, um, you know, you kind of take it for granted a little bit. But, um, you know, having a think about it is just absolutely fantastic. And, you know, we can't wait to get them, get them up to it. Yeah, um, I know I'm going to head to Tassie. And so are you, and we're so thrilled to be part of the Live From Australia stream this weekend. Can't wait to see you back here. And up next, you're going to be putting like a pro in Tassie. Which I'm going to tune into. I need some, uh, some work on my putting. So have fun down in Tassie, guys. Cheers. <laughs>